And the Australia-based telecommunications company Telstra says it won't be jumping on the Myanmar bandwagon, at least for now. In an exclusive interview with Channel News Asia, Telstra's CEO, David Thody, said the company didn't bid for one of the telecom licenses in the recent tender. Mr. Thody has been in Singapore opening Telstra's new office. We started by asking him about his assessment for growth opportunities in the emerging markets in this region. Well, first let me say that we have enormously optimistic views around uh, the total Asia growth. I mean, whether you're talking China, coming down through Vietnam, Thailand, or even across to Myanmar, and Indonesia, of course, as well. But the whole Asian region, as you know, the demand, consumer demand grows, we think there's just tremendous opportunity. But for us, uh, we really look to see where we can uh, really build competitive advantage or differentiation. Uh, while we were very early on in Vietnam and Cambodia and Thailand and Indonesia, Myanmar was never a country that we've ever had significant presence in. So when we looked at the Myanmar opportunity, we felt we really couldn't make a real difference there. So we have not bid on Myanmar. Because as you know, I mean, Asia is many different countries and you've really got to know the country that you're going into. So in this situation, we said no, but there's many other opportunities we're working on throughout the region. Telstra has secured some new licenses in India, Japan and Singapore in recent years. Can you tell us a little bit about your strategy for Asia and do you expect Asia to contribute a, a larger portion of uh, revenue for Telstra? We have a long-term strategy to build you know, significant points of presence right throughout Asia. For any large telecommunications operator who's you know, domestically based, you have to look to geographical expansion. However, the reality is you've got to know what you're good at doing. So for us, growing with our Australian-based customers into the region is very important, or with customers coming from Europe or United States, we can then grow with them, uh, really meet their needs. And a great example was the recent Jetstar contract that we just uh, signed, but there's many ones. We support Volvo throughout the region. So that's where we're focused. But more and more uh, businesses need uh, more sophisticated, sophisticated communications capability. So, you know, you know, unified comms about how they communicate, collaborate. And that's where we're really focused as we go forward. So we see really good growth prospects going forward and a very important part of our strategy. Now, Telstra has also recently signed a billion dollar contract with the Australian uh, Department of Defence. How will these contracts change your business and also grow uh, your headcount? We will definitely be growing our headcount as we sign new business. So, uh, look, we, we see good growth prospects going forward, you know, 5% plus. But it will really depend on what business we sign. The defence contract is very domestically oriented, but it's about uh, managing all the facilities of the Australian Defence Force and that's a contract in excess of a billion dollars over eight to ten years so it's a very large contract but of course our Defence Forces do serve right across the world so when they move across the world we provide the services for them in terms of communications. Jetstar on the other hand is uh, expanding their presence throughout Asia and they've got a number of joint ventures here in Asia and we are really growing with them, though about 80% of the infrastructure required for that contract we already have and we'll be extending into some new areas. Telcos around the world have been rationalising their growth. Now, what's the next big trend in the telco sector and how uh, can that help telcos to maximise their revenue? I've never seen a period of greater demand for our services. The amount of information we're carrying on our networks is doubling nearly every year. It's how you create better value for your customer that they will you know, be willing to pay for. But if I look at the future growth areas, some of the areas that I talked about before are still playing. I still see enormous growth in mobility. And this is about the connected internet, the mobile internet, and the growth of iPads or new devices or the connected car. So enormous opportunity there as people are mobile and they want to connect. I think cloud computing in all its forms continues to be a wonderful opportunity. And uh, network operators have a unique value proposition in that market because connectivity is so important. Then I look at you know, the social media. So I'm far from pessimistic. In fact, I'm very optimistic. And then of course the last David Thody.